if we have only announced ourselves on 2013, and if we don't take action at the same might, I think till 2023 we may not be ready. So that should be the aim. We can't have it tomorrow. But I think we should be looking at a timeline and taking benchmarks from countries who have actually started the process. For the offensive component of the cyber attack capability which they started off in America, it started off in 94, 95. So when the policy came in 2003, 4 is the time you started seeing these tools and elements being utilized and available in a nascent stage. They have matured over a period of time. So I think today why I'm saying this is that if we do not talk about the offensive component in our cyber defense strategy, you will find that we will not create the wherewithal and the tools to be able to execute this. We will be borrowing somebody's to do this task. We need to have our own indigenous stuff which will give us the right to be able to do what we have to do. Uh, if, if I had to look at all this, I will not talk about the organizational structures, but may I just put it like this, that if I had to look at what should be there, I think the first most important thing, irrespective of the present structures that we have created, uh, we're having the National Security Advisor, the, uh, the Cyber Security Advisor, we have uh, my, my honorable predecessor who spoke, who handles very, very key elements of the cyber structure of the national level. But I would say that we need a single accountable agency which needs to function with military precision. And I think this is where the answer lies. We have to decide whether it is an army cyber command, you call it any command. It's something like our strategic forces. It has to be created in a manner that there is a single point accountability. The structure has to be based not on our beaten methodology of creating organizations which tend to become so heavy that they become a pain in the neck and then they don't do <coughs> they don't perform then you have more people to shove the blame on he, that was his responsibility or his domain or my domain i think we'll have to get it as a lean mean focused organization on a timeline with specialists employed for a period of time at the way they have to be paid to be able to come and perform and then leave the system and then have people to run it as it is required to be done I think the present cybersecurity policy itself is basically, as it's, I mean, which all of you say, is a statement of principles. I think this needs to finally come into a cyber strategy doctrine. I mean, like we have a nuclear doctrine. We have to have a cyber strategy doctrine. Somewhere it has to evolve, as is maybe not today, but I think in a period of time, and I'm sure some of the people in the government are working at it, but I think the input from the media, from these kind of think tanks, these kind of seminars, should be go inside to be able to make sure that our doctrine is going to be resilient enough to tackle the challenges that come up. Uh, there, there has to be, as I said, a change in the mindset. We have to talk about the offensive bit as much as the defensive bit in the same breath. We can't talk of them in separate uh, silos. I mean, they are part and fixture of the same side. It's the opposite sides of the coin. And you need both sides if you want the coin to be relevant. So I think we need to start looking at it. I think <coughs> the most important thing which I keep feeling is that the make in India, irrespective of whether I get the guns made in India, but I think I require to have that main heart of a computer to be made in India. I think the technological sovereignty of that has to be made in this country. I cannot... I cannot have a weapon system which has a chip which is controlled with a malware which is already residing there and it's activated and I fire it and I go somewhere else here. I'm sorry, I don't want that happening. Let me get it right now. And today I have to say, and this is one, one, one more thing which I must compliment the people who are organizing this. This is the only place where I haven't seen the signal of Hawaii. Otherwise all cyber seminars in India seem to have Hawaii who are the first sponsors of that event here. Yeah? I'm sorry, why are they there here? Yeah? Thank God you don't have him here. Uh, because if that is the guy who's actually creating the problem and has got the residual, I think we need to be very careful of how we utilize. Please use his money, please use his resources, but please make sure you don't share what you're thinking about in a public platform which will be easily available to the other side to look at it in his own manner. Uh, I think <coughs> the other thing that I would say is skill development which was talked about. One is a mindset and a change in the way of life. It's changed. I mean, I, I wasn't born with a computer, it was an, it was an acquired asset. But I'm sure my grandkid, they function in a manner as it comes as part of their toy bank. Yeah. So I'm sure they will think and act in a different manner. So, so there is a transition happening in India. We have a young workforce, which I see here, who are used to using it as a second extension. Because, I mean, when you look at Facebook and Twitter, he wants to go to around the corner, he wants to put it on Facebook. I mean, I really don't know why, but suddenly anyway, I'm now morning going to do this, I'm going there. So I think the world is changing. It has its negatives, it has its positives. But I think the capability to harness this technology is much better. They should be utilized. I think we'll have to start looking at agreements at the top level for mutual, mutual legal assistant uh, treaties with neighbors, which is happening. I mean, if you look at 
what happened between China and the US, or the Russia and US. Today, the, as, as you're all aware, I mean, it doesn't have to go out. It's in the media. They're most worried. The American presidential campaign is worried hell that it's being hijacked by the Russians here. They feel that they got into Hillary's computer and they're now fiddling around with Trump's this thing. So just look at it. What is it doing? It's going to change the mindset of the people who are going to be sitting on top here. You change governments. Initially, the US used to send people to topple governments in Colombia and these smaller peripheral states. Now you really don't have to do it. You change the election results in a manner. And yesterday when somebody talked about the EVKs, the electronic voting machines of India, which can be broken in from anywhere, I'm sorry, I don't know how elections will be done. You don't really have to fill the ballot in. Yeah? You just need to change the bloody signal from outside. So maybe more job for the hackers and the hackers, and uh, greater problems for the people on the security side. So I think we need to start looking at these issues uh, as far as we are concerned. But I think the legal, regulatory, and the economic aspects of digital development in India needs to be addressed in a very, very focused manner. <coughs> I, I know I, 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 there are a uh, plethora of very, very eminent speakers hereafter, but may I just share with you how would a cyber warfare if, war, if it had to happen between two countries, really start? Uh, we did a scenario building in one of the uh, training establishments. So what does he do? The first thing that he does is he, has, he targets your economic sensitivities. It happens. There is no war, no peace. You and I are not talking, but I'm upset that you're not listening to what I want to do in the... Uh, on the high seas, you're trying to fiddle around in South China Sea, I don't like that idea, so I just very send this thing and I do the economic sensitivities. I hit your stock exchange and banking system, I do these transactions, I suddenly see the flight of FDI, my economic development comes down, India very starts shaking. Uh, there is a problem, yeah, the government has to do. He do and he leaves overtly covert trail for you to follow, okay, it's from him, but he's, you can't catch him, but you know it's coming from there. So he utilizes that strength, then uses the track to, to try and convince you, okay, listen, listen to my point of view. Uh, if that doesn't happen, we call it, uh, you can call it the thunder, the before the fire. The lightning is you try hit now the infrastructure vulnerability, where it starts affecting the common man. Where does it happen? Airline, the very railway system, the national electric grid goes off, which has happened a few times. Uh, thanks to, I'm sure, some malfunctions, maybe some from outside, some from inside. And if it has happened like this, you, you end up having this and still leave that overt covert and keep pushing it. Then you come to the third stage where you hit the communication infrastructure, you stop the internet. It's like giving fresh air and milk to the younger population today. If he can't get onto Facebook, he can't see his SMS, the guy is going to be gasping for breath here. Yeah? So there's going to be panic here. Yeah? And this time he's not hiding in a covert manner. He's overtly done this, I mean covertly, it's overtly done. And he tells you, listen, guys, if you don't listen to my point of view, please do it. Yeah? So you don't. And if you still don't do, then he starts targeting your war waging. And in the meantime, he does his mobilization to the borders. Then he starts targeting your war waging. I want my surveillance system. I suddenly find my satellite running away. I find my UAV going away. So if he starts doing all this nonsense, then do you go to war? Or do you succumb before that? So I think that old book, which uh, yesterday, the first talk when he talked, The Art of War of Sun Tzu, killing the enemy without having touching him. I think that's the story there is. So please be careful. If this be the cyber scenario that is coming up, all of you who are responsible people, who are the brains, please look at the security aspect, please look at the policy making aspect, and please look at seeing that India starts at a, <clears throat> at, at, we are late, but let us not be late because of being a little complacent about how serious the threat is. And I think I would only leave by saying that to this young gathering who is going to carve the future, please continue to do with a focused mind to ensure that the cyber security is look at, looked at in the overall umbrella of offensive defense capability of the private citizen and let India be a policy maker on these bodies which will affect you and me. And I'll, with that, may I just say, continue to wish this seminar a great success. I'll sit in and listen to some of the very, some of the speakers I want to hear myself. Uh, before I call off for here, and thank you once again for having given me this privilege to come and share my thoughts with you all.